Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. This week I want to touch the issue of those. What are those? Because when you open Scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verses 9, Paul says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, he says, and there are many adversaries. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 12. He says, furthermore, when I came to Trowels to preach Christ's gospel, and the door was open unto me. Colossians chapter 4 verses 3. He says, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bounds that I may make it manifest even as I ought to speak it. So all of these scriptures take us back to we see those and those and those and those. So we ask ourselves, what are those? Why does Paul need open doors? Why does Paul celebrate an effectual, an open and effectual door? Why are there adversaries on those doors? Why was the door supposed to open for him? Or why did the door open for him in trials when he went to preach the gospel? Why does he ask the church that they may pray for them that God would open unto them a door of utterance that they might speak the mystery of Christ for which they are also in bounds that they may make it manifest even as they ought to speak it? Why are they asking for those? Why are they celebrating those? Why are they recognizing those in the spirit? It's because in the spirit realm, they such a thing as those. Somebody shout hallelujah. And what are those? What are those? Those are graces that evoke the power of opportunity. I want you to say those are graces that evoke the power of opportunity. These are the graces that open, that evoke the power of opportunity. And why do we talk about opportunity? Because opportunity is the only blessing that allows a man to release hidden potential. Because if potential is not released, it is frustrated. And if potential is frustrated, you are like a woman who is in birth pangs per child giving time. And she's supposed to bring forth a child at nine months. And lo and behold, she has gone into another month of the tenth month. And she's still pregnant. That's the feeling. Somebody shout hallelujah. Why do we talk about opportunity? Because there are many people in this world who have prepared themselves for things, great, great things in this world, and they never had the opportunity for the things that they were prepared for. I know people who went to school, had a great graduation ceremony, graduated with good grades, and have never gotten a job. Nobody ever found need for what they were trained for. I know people with very great voices that will never have the opportunity to stand where their craft should be appreciated or must be appreciated. He says the race is not to the swift, neither battle to the men which are strong, neither bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But he says, but time and chance happen to them all. What therefore chance is opportunity. All of us have the ability to express our potential through the power of opportunity. It's one thing to have the ability to do something. It's another when you're not given the opportunity to do that thing. It's one thing when you see you being able to do something better, but a man with less potential is doing it. 
It's painful. God has ordained the best things for the best people. Hallelujah. But not the best according to standards of the world. God responds to men who are yielded more than are talented. There is something powerful about being an available vessel. But it is painful when the vessel is available and it will never have the opportunity God has ordained it to be. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us need the power of opportunity. The chance to do what God has ordained us to do, assigned us to do by purpose and design. I always tell people, maybe the fastest runner in the world is not the fastest. Maybe the fastest runner in the world was the man who had opportunity to run. And on the stage that he had to run. With the best trainer that was available. And that made him the fastest man. Maybe the fastest man has never been tested. He's probably in one of the slum areas or the most hidden parts of this world. And he could leave this world and die without having known that he was the fastest man. Maybe the fastest swimmer in the world does not even know how to swim. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or if he's swimming, he's swimming in lakes fishing for a meal. And we're thinking that the fastest swimmer in the world is the fellow we see on television. Maybe the greatest artists are not the ones on television. Maybe. Maybe the greatest singers, musicians, are not the ones we see on television. Maybe they spoke with greater voices, but they never had the opportunity. Never underestimate the power of opportunity. And there is still people, if you want to embrace the power of opportunity, never take lightly the man that gives you even the lightest opportunity to be who you are. Never do it. Somebody thought, hallelujah. Never take lightly when a man or a woman gives you an opportunity to explore your potential. Because many people are looking for that and they can't find that. Research in this nation has proved that of every graduate that comes and graduates every year, the job market can only consume about 25%. The rest of the percentage of the graduates in the nation, some will never have the opportunity to work, and some may even never have the opportunity to do anything else. And some sail through life like that. Let me tell you, there are no coincidences when it comes to opportunity. There are no coincidences when it comes to doors opening. You must know how, and doors must open for you deliberately. I always tell people the life of faith is a deliberate life. It's not a life of chance and luck. Faith is deliberate. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. And so we ask ourselves, why is it that certain people will never or have never or do not have the opportunity for the potential that they have? Their potential will never be reconciled with the opportunities available. And because of that, the foundations of the world will always be out of course. Because the foundations of the world look to the perfection of the reconciliation of the best potential with the best opportunity. That's how God has ordained the way of life. And each one of us, is best in something. The Bible says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of power might be of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Our sufficiency is not of us as of to think of anything by us, but the sufficiency of God who has made us able ministers of a covenant. We carry all sufficiency. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We've been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. The availability of potential is there. But the opportunity, the doors, the doors, the doors. There are many people who don't know how to respond to greatness. That the day greatness stands before them and is ready to grant them opportunity, they do not know how to respond to it. Because the language they speak is contrary to the communication that greatness invites. Sometimes in this life, you will have very few moments 
with greatness. With greatness. And sometimes that greatness is in people. Somebody shout hallelujah. But if you do not know how to respond to greatness, if you do not know what to do when greatness stands before you, many of you will die very average people and live very mediocre lives and predictable ones. Tell your neighbor, far be it from me. In Jesus' name. In Genesis chapter 41, a story is given of a man called Joseph. Joseph is sold into slavery by his brothers. You know the story very well. In the pit, he's thrown, he's bought. He finds himself into a household of a man called Potiphar. He's a slave there. And then his wife pulls a very funny move and we find the fellow in prison. And then the Bible says God gives Pharaoh a dream. Somebody say a dream. And when God gives Pharaoh a dream, the Bible says he looks for somebody to interpret it. The butler tells him there is a man in prison who can interpret the dream that you've had. And then they summon Joseph. He has told him the meaning of the dream, and now he's giving him the solution of the dream. Are you following? In verses 33, Joseph tells Pharaoh, he says, Now let therefore Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in seven plenteous years and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay upon corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land perish not through famine. And verse 37 says, And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this? Is a man in whom the Spirit of God is. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Opportunity, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all thine people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over the land of Egypt. That is opportunity. Let me tell you how that story could have panned out. There is another version to that. Joseph shaves his beard, comes, stands before the king, tells him the seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine, and then Joseph stands before the king and gives the king a solution of how to store for the seven years of plenty that in the seven years of lack they might have, you know, food enough and that the land will be preserved in the mathematics Joseph is giving. And then, after that, the king would tell him, thank you, reward him with the house. And then the king would say, now let us start to look for wise men to give us the application, the execution of what the man who interpreted the dream could. And then they would appoint certain different men over Egypt. If it was so, then the narrative that there would have been, wow, there was a great dream interpreter that saved Egypt from famine. But only the prophetic word of interpretation of this dream would have been the thing we would have remembered this man for and his story would have ended I want you to know that when Joseph stood before greatness he did not present himself as an answer Joseph gave a solution when you stand before greatness you don't present yourself as an answer you give a solution if it is tagged to your destiny the door of your destiny will open. Do you know how many doors have closed on men who give themselves an answer when greatness is seeking for a solution? Did you understand what I just said? Do you know how many people present themselves as an answer when greatness is looking for a solution? Give greatness solution. Greatness will look at you as an answer. Never present yourself before greatness as an answer. Joseph did not come to tell the king, I can fix it. Joseph came and told the king how to fix it. And the king looked for a man who has the application and so that the wisdom of the solution carried the answer. Let greatness find its answer in you, but never appear to be the answer. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is how doors are opened. 
The world is looking for men with solutions. The world is looking for men who are able to give solutions. But not yet not present themselves as answers because some solutions are bigger than us. Somebody said hallelujah. And I've also learned by wisdom that not all doors that are open for you are open for you to enter. Somebody said hallelujah. Sometimes we are deceived by the key. And we're like, okay, if I have the keys of this door, then why isn't it mine for me to open? If you remember the story of Peter, by vision invited into the house of Cornelius. The Bible says he went into the house of Cornelius, preached the gospel, and while he yet spent, the Bible says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, Peter says, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. He knows that any man that believes works righteousness, he is accepted of God. But in Galatians chapter 2, Paul says that when Peter, James, and who? John, which seemed to be the pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, to and Barnabas, to the uncircumcised, as it was to them, to the second side. The Bible says, they gave unto me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go to the uncircumcised, and they to the second side. Peter was called for circumcised men. Peter was not called for uncircumcised men. The grace on Peter's life was to the Jews. The grace on Paul and Barnabas' life was to the Gentiles. Do you understand what I'm saying? But God used Peter, the man for whom he had given grace to the circumcised, to open the door to the uncircumcised. But because Peter opened the door to the uncircumcised, it does not mean that Peter was called to the uncircumcised. Not all doors that you carry keys to open are for you to enter. It carries wisdom. That's why every one of us must understand assignments. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that's the essence of keys in the spirit. Somebody shout amen. Shout amen. And you will see that Paul paid a huge price every time he tried to go to the Jews. The biggest persecutions on Apostle Paul were entering synagogues to preach to circumcised men because much as he had a message for them, he did not have the grace for them. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because you have a potential of a thing, it does not mean that the door should open to you for that same thing. It's deeper than that. Do you know how many people think that God responds only to the application of need? Because you have seen a need in the kingdom, does that presuppose that you are called for that door? Not all doors are for you. There are doors that are yours and there are doors that don't belong to you. It takes great maturity to know where to enter and where not to enter. You'll save yourself many woes when you enter the right doors. And you'll attract many woes when you enter the wrong doors. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, when we look at the book of Revelation chapter 4 and verses 1, the Bible gives a certain invitation of a man which was walking in the spirit. And he says, And after this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice I heard, as it were, was of a trumpet talking with me, and said, Come up thither, and I will show thee things that must be hereafter. We see an invitation on the inner realms of purpose, because every time we're talking about doors, we're talking about the graces, of God that have the end of purpose, the manifestation for which a thing is started. You understand what I'm saying? The Bible says, let me give you an example, that your gift shall create room. How many of you know that that room is opportunity? But I've told people before that the gifts of the Spirit do not sustain the room. Are you hearing me? A certain knowledge is important, it's independent, it's mandated to know certain things before you 
enter this space of rooms. Because there are many people to whom rooms have been opened because of the gift of God on their lives. But that is the last time certain things will ever open for them. Do you know that there are people who have already been, in a sense, disqualified from certain opportunities that came for them once because they did not know how to respond to those opportunities. There are people in this world, you might say, for example, I've been looking for a job and I failed to find a job. Yes, that's true. But there are many people in this world you will find who are looking for people like you. Who is looking for a job? Are you following what I'm saying? There are many people in the world who are looking for people like you who is looking for a job. And chances are that these two people might never be reconciled in life. You might never be reconciled to the people that seek after your craft, your grace, your blessing, your potential, your ability, your degree, your master's degree, your skills, your expertise. It's very possible. It's very possible. I have seen it. Do you know how many people are looking for money and have reason for it? And how many people have money and don't even know what to use it for? They're all on the same world. Same surface. Are you following what I'm saying? And there are people who are so wise in handling money but have failed to amass enough. And there are people who are so foolish in handling it but have continued to be rich and will die rich even in their own foolishness. In our local language we have the saying that some have teeth and don't have meat. And some have meat but they don't have teeth. Tell your neighbor, far from me. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Far from me. Far from me. Far from me. Far from me. That's the essence of doors. That God will help reconcile that thing that you have with the thing that must apply. In the physical realm, Every Christian must find purpose. Every Christian must be appointed with a certain assignment. Every Christian must have a definitive part in the gospel. Every Christian must have a certain office of function. That's how God has called us. He has not called us to nothingness. The Bible says he has not called Jacob to seek him in vain. If you're just a Christian who's going to survive and then die, then you're in the wrong faith. He told us, occupy until I come. Somebody said hallelujah. And in the places of occupation, God seeks that we yield to certain responsibilities. And these responsibilities are the things that make us heads and not tails. Above and not beneath. How do we learn to nations if we don't carry the responsibility of it? I have had Christians discuss the seven mountains of influence. And how we must make sure that Christians go up on these seven mountains of influence. Well, I always put a little bomb in there and I tell them, for me I'm not interested in a Christian being on the top of the mountain of influence. But I'm interested in the quality of Christians on the top of that mountain. Because we have Christians who are not inspirational. Even if they're on the top there, they would not benefit us. Do I have a witness? Yes, we know they are Christians. But what have they done for the body of Christ? What have they done for the church? What are they doing for the gospel? Nothing. And so now we are praying that the quality of Christianity, in other words, you are on top of the media mountain, but when they give you the Bible to open, they wish you a pastor. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor they're talking about me. That's what happens when opportunity meets the best. We change the world. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. At one time the spirit was teaching me about how we illegally transact. How sometimes the transactions are illegal. In John chapter 10 verses 1 he says, Verily, verily I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door 
into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Minister. And in verse 7, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door. <laughs> Who has understood what I just said? So he's saying that if you don't come by the door, you are a thief. And if you don't come by the door, and that's why I want to help pastors, if you're a man of God, never say that that person stole my sheep. Because John chapter 10 tells you who a thief is. Did he preach enough Christ? And your ship crossed? Then he went by the door. He's not a thief. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. <laughs> but if he manipulated, lied, spoke evil about you to get a ship into his church, then that one is a thief. Because he didn't go by the door. Somebody shout hallelujah. That one is a word. Because he didn't go by the door. Do you know there are pastors who do that? Do you know there are pastors who build congregations by showing how other people are this and that and this and that? Do you know they exist? They live just to expose everyone how everyone is wicked and evil except them who are holy. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Do you know there are people who trade that way? That is illegal transaction in the things of the spirit. And sooner or later, sooner or later, when a man of God builds a door, they will come back. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because Christ is the only door by which men enter. He says, verily, verily, I am the door. I always tell people that we have a law called the law of exchange. Are you hearing me? And this is the law that touches the things that are not seen and how they are translated in the things that are seen. And some people don't know that you cannot manifest anything in the physical realm without touching the spiritual and you cannot get from the spiritual without giving to the spiritual. That is what they call sowing to the spirit. You will of the spirit reap life eternal or everlasting. Somebody shout hallelujah. And just how to know, to deal in the spirit realm, that whatever you see is revealed, you experience, dream, and see is translated to the physical. That transaction requires doors and windows. Because windows help this way and doors help this way. In the physical realm, doors are the essence. In the spiritual realm, windows are the essence. Never forget that. So doors complete the transaction of the law of exchange. Like I said, Joseph would have dreamed a dream and just interpreted it and went back even to the prison. Are you hearing me? But God had placed something inside him. But when Pharaoh looks at him, he must see an answer. He must see potential. He must see equal greatness over his own realm. He says, see, I've set you over the land of Egypt. That is how we make it. There is no other way. There is a man in this world, there is a woman in this world that has your door. And the day you stand before them, whether they want it or not, they must open it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. And that is so. That is so. Paul is praying for a door battery. Because even at one time in scripture he said, Satan forbade us. There was a time even Paul wanted to go and preach. But Satan disturbed and troubled him. Until he could not minister. Paul, the apostle, who lays the foundation of the New Testament. The master builder. Praise the Lord. He says, wherefore we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. Eh, eh? Can Satan do that? He can if you don't know how to. You know, the church thinks that we are called 
to stay on Paul's revelation. The church doesn't understand that Paul is the foundation and we are supposed to build. These things are written for your learning. If Paul had a messenger to buffet him, that means also you should be buffeted. Because of the abundance of revelation. We learn. And Paul too knows that the church is advancing from one level of glory to another level of glory. But how can it be glory if epignosis is not clear? Again, that is the essence of the keys. When he gets to Peter, he says, Behold, I give you the keys of the kingdom. He says, and whatsoever you shall bound on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loosen on the earth, it shall be loosened in the heavens. Because keys are our epignosis. They are full and complete knowledge in God, touching our path, our mandate, our assignment, our offices. These keys define our liberties and the boundaries thereof. When we emphasize things like the epignosis to the Christian, they are not just there to inflate your ego and make you proud because you know, but they are there to give you the necessary keys for the doors that you need. Because it is one thing to get before a door and you don't know how to open it. Knowledge, wisdom and understanding shall be the stability of your times and the strength of your salvation. That is why you are equipped with the word of God. But when you get before a door, you know how to react. There are things that you might never learn in the order of systematic theology. Not that I'm against systematic theology. But it's only as systematic as the man studies the parts of pattern according to his level of revelation. And where God met him. He can meet you on a higher plane. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is why I think we are entering a generation where men are going to teach things you can't find in any concordance, you can't find in any encyclopedia, you can't find in any commentary, you can't find in any book, you can't find on any CD, you can't find on any flash disk. Why? Because certain things are open to them beyond where certain men were. Keys! Somebody said hallelujah. That is why later, in the book of Revelation, when God gets to the church in Philadelphia, the Bible says they hold the key of David. Huh? If you read Revelation chapter 3 verse 7, it says that to the end of the church of Philadelphia, write this thing, says he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth, I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Whoever has the keys opens the door. Are you hearing me? And to the key of David, of whom has the door, Christ, he has embraced to give that to the church of Philadelphia. He's telling them, this thing that has opened to you, no man can ever shut it. Because I carry the keys of it. Now let me go to the issue of opportunity. Because some of you need to understand the things that I'm sharing and why they need to be reconciled with where you are. In this world, there is nothing as fulfilling as understanding your course, numbering your days, applying your heart to his wisdom, and allowing God, yielding to his spirit enough to get the opportunities and the doors that were necessary to open for you in this life, for you to fulfill the potential God has ordained for you in this same life. But I also want you to understand that not all potential has had the right door. Some people think that it is obvious that because a man has potential, therefore he has the right door. God told Catherine Kuhlman that there were three men I've called to do what I'm calling you to do and they failed, Catherine. And God tells her, if you fail, Catherine, I'll raise another man, Catherine. The same thing he told Reinhard Bonke. He told her, four men. I don't know who these men are. And I don't know what they could have been. And I don't know where they are now. Or how they missed it. But 
Reinhard Bonke tells you that God told him that there were three or four men who missed it. And Reinhard was the available vessel at that particular point. That means rain had entered something that God had not originally planned, but it was necessary for the divine purpose. And because he was the available vessel of that time, purpose does not wait for man. Never confuse your gift with your assignment. The giftings and callings of God are without repentance, but the assignment can be switched. Because assignment is tied to divine purpose. If I want a man in that time to stand, and I'm God, and that man is not available, I will look for another one. He sought for a man who could stand in the gap, but there was none. There was none. He sought for a man. There was a time he became so desperate that he just wanted one man to say, God, I'm available. And that would have changed the destiny of a certain man. That's why I tell people, there is a place for available men and that place for available men opens up vacuums beyond many men can define parts there are things in the spirit realm that are available that, oh eye has not seen ear has not had they've not entered the hearts of men but the bible says but he has revealed them to us by his spirit some people don't see that this is paul giving a testimony of his personal experience. And that is a realm we can only plug in by faith in understanding. Not faith that is passively ignorant. Not the faith that seeks to believe what it carries, no epignosis of. When the Bible says, I have not seen, listen, ear has not had, has not entered the hearts of men, what the Lord has prepared for them that love him, but, but, he has revealed it to us by his spirit. Imagine my man walking with the revelation of what the world has never seen, what the world has never heard, what has never entered into the heart of any man, but a certain man carries the full revelation of it. Just think about it. So we can claim that scripture, but are we claiming it just with our minds agreeing? With a faith that is passive and indifferent? Epignosis is not something you teach a man into. No. No. Because epignosis is not for men who are just beaten with the beauty of the word, who are just fascinated by how the things of the spirit break down. No. Epignosis for men who understand the responsibility. To whom much is given, much is required. Are you hearing me? And like I told you, doors are waiting for the most prepared. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you will never prepare enough, except if you have a sudden encounter with the Holy Spirit. Do you think you'll ever read the Bible and understand it fully in this life? No. But the Spirit of God can get this thing for you. And instead of you opening it, it opens itself to you. And when it opens itself to you, you will never seek for a sermon. Summons will seek you. It's one thing to minister from what you've drunk and received. In the simplicity of how your mind adopts. It's another to minister from a certain depth of abundance. From a certain overflow. Now, this is beyond even the minister. This is for whether you're a business person, this thing touches you. Whether you're a career person, this thing touches you. The only problem with education, human education, it is only limited to answer only what men have given us as theory. Are you hearing me? And many people celebrate the excellence of understanding other men's theories. If you're a Christian, you should never die. You should never die just by celebrating the understanding of another man's mystery or theory. No, God should elevate you to invent your own theory. Head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. Somebody shout hallelujah. When it says, I shall make you the head and not the tail, it means that the next idea in medicine, That door must open up to a man who is speaking in tongues. Somebody shout hallelujah. The next best idea in business. That door 
joy in the spirit realm if God says I'm changing the business world of the world it must sit on a second tongue speaking woman in this meeting how else can you be the head and not the tail opportunity somebody said hallelujah the next best physics idea the next best engineering idea let it sit on somebody that is what makes you the head and not the tail above and not beneath it is easy to preach the gospel when you leave the park but our christians are spending overnight and fasting for 40 days and 40 nights and they come drier than they are and they go on prayer mountains and they come back confused over silly prophetic things that don't even They are praying but nothing is changing on them. Because they don't understand the power of this thing. I'm not against prayer. No. I'm talking about ignorance. Ignorance. It doesn't matter how much you pray and fast. If you're ignorant, we will find you after 40 years where you are. There is nothing that is powerful like praying in the revelation of where you belong that is why every time i teach i insist and say church we must embrace the complete the full and perfect knowledge of god epignosis and epignosis is not something that can come by gnosko progressive knowledge no listen gnosko progressive knowledge is only seeking to take it to an experience and when you meet that experience you just dip into epignosis and the day it settles before you Believe me, you'll never seek to open anything. When you come before things, they'll open before you. Even doors. That is the power of walking in open doors. Paul then say, I opened up the door. He says, a great and effectual door has been opened unto me. He walked and it opened. Everything you turn to just opens. Are you hearing me? Everything you enter to transacting just opens on your life. Everywhere you go, success follows you. So you're the one they need. You're the one they want. They're the one they want to listen to. You're the one they want to respond to. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Be it far from you that you should be prepared in the mighty name of Jesus and never meet the door that requires you. And I'm not talking about physical preparation. I said you'll never get that fully. But I'm talking about the Spirit preparing you. And that is why I have learned to maximize the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because now when I go there, I don't go to beg. Because I realize the responsibility that is upon my life. I don't go to Jesus to ask him for a car, for a job, for this or that. No, we are not beggars in the presence of God. We are not slaves, but we are sons. We go in the bliss of whom we cry, Abba, Father. Now my prayer life changed because I know what is in me. Oh, when you understand this mystery, you'll never ask for a job another day. You'll never ask for a husband. You'll never ask for a wife. You'll never ask for a child. You'll never ask for a building. You'll never ask for a house. Why? Every time you look at them, they'll open before you. Effectual doors will open. Why? Because you have an experience. And they'll be great. I say they'll be great. I say they'll be great. I say they will 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 be great. They can only be great. That is why I tell Christians we must be diligent. Halabakata. We must be fervent in the things of the spirit we must be mighty in scripture when you say you're going to believe believe him when you say you're going to pray are you hearing me when you're reading the word read it like it's the last thing you're going to read are you hearing me when you're preparing yourself prepare yourself according to what you believe you're entering where are you going ask your neighbor where are you going your preparation source it shows it shows and tonight many of your potentials are reconciling with the right doors <laughs> i said many of your potentials are reconciling with the right doors one man had me once and he said i must put you on television whether you pay or don't that was my door 
<laughs> I never asked for it. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. There are many things I know they must come. Why? Because I know what I have inside there. They can throw you in a prison cell. Joseph, you have a dream. <laughs> they can accuse you. But you have a dream. Somebody said hallelujah. You can be thrown in a ditch and left for dead. But you have a dream. And sometimes we fall in the most riskiest places. Moses at an age without understanding is on a floating basket. But little do they know that the man is flowing to destiny. Why? Because there is something inside him that even if you throw it on a lake and just leave that basket to float, it will go to a door. Tell your neighbor I'm that blessed. I'm a child of God. If they bury you, you can only grow out of it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because you are a seed. That's why he says all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. Our windows define our doors. When your windows are open a certain way, you never worry about certain doors. In fact, our windows predict our doors. Sereketere do you know you can get to a point where men can't ignore you? But let me say it again. Did you know that you can get to a point where men cannot ignore you? That even when they try to ignore you, they cannot ignore you. They can't ignore you. They'll hurt you in public and admire you privately. Even in their envy, they'll say, but the guy is deep. Yeah, 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 but the guy is deep. Somebody said, Amen. Because you have that treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of power might be of God. Somebody said, Amen. Shout glory to God. Shout glory to God. And God opened the door of heaven in Revelation 4 and invited the man up. The Bible says, He told him, Come up and I'll show you. He gave him opportunity to see. And through that purpose was defined. I tell people, if many doors are closed before you, then understand there is something wanting here. In the windows. If the windows open right, you realize that the things you asked God to do for you and through you, actually he will demand you to do paul got to a level where he said woe unto me if i not preach because too much was given to him too much too, too, too much too much too much he was in the class of those god required from it is required of you it is required of you that is why i tell you you must set this world because it is required of you you must set this world because it is required of you. Yes, your name will go beyond you because it is required of you. You know too much already. Too much. That is why I feel sorry for people who sit in these services and never understand this message. How can they not understand this thing God has given us? God has given us something so big, so big. Your eyes have to see this. They have to see this. We have the door. The revelation of Jesus Christ. That's why we give you every Thursday, every Sunday. Paul says, I sought to know nothing and be acquainted of nothing except the door. Christ and him crucified. That is why I tell people, if you never see Jesus through this, you might never see him. You might never see him. Because he became the word.
Then he, the word, was flesh. And he dwelt among men. That light, that light is in the word. You will never escape the word. Run from it, but it will find you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now this is what I feel in my spirit. I am allowed now to say that great doors are opening for you. According to the potential, to the measure, to the anointing with which God has given you. I want everybody to put up their hands. I see an anointing of the Holy Spirit. I see a certain anointing. Come on, speak in tongues. God is reconciling your potential to the door that must come to you. Epignosis, the experience, has embraced you. The glory of God is upon your life. Come on, speak another tongue. Speak another tongue. You, you just need a certain opportunity. There are many, but there's just one that will put you on that stage. There's just one that will give you a name. There's just one opportunity. One opportunity will separate your voice from the noises. One opportunity will give you a frequency higher than many men can tune. One opportunity can give you a distinction. The Bible says nobody lights a candle and puts it under a bushel. We are all lit by God to be seen because we are the light of the world. Where the city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Our opportunities are here. And those doors men can't shut. I know you've probably gone through life experiences that have closed certain doors on you. But I want to tell you that there is a door no man can shut. <laughs> you could have had frustrations and disappointments in the past. But I want to submit to you that there is a door no man can shut. Because they don't have the key of it. Only Christ has it. Come on, speak to God. May something open for you. May something open for you. Come on, pray. Pray. The world is looking for you. The world is looking for you. Come on, pray. 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 In this understanding. The world is looking for a woman here. The world is looking for a certain man here. Come on, pray. for so long come on pray pray pray
Rapala Payereba. Father, we thank you for your word. We receive your word. We receive your word. I see nations opening on some people's life. Not just jobs, but nations. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. You know why you open this door. Not one nation. Not two nations. Not three nations. Not four nations. But the world is opening up to somebody. I don't know what God has blessed on you. But I see something on your life from which nations will feed. Receive it in the name of Jesus. There's people here that have been frustrated because of just how much you had but could not translate to opportunity. God says, today's the day. God will speak to their consciences that you are the best. Even before you say it. God will speak to their hearts that you deserve it. Even before you say it. I want you to give the Lord a man help a praise. Come on, clap like something has been done for you. Clap like something has been done for you. Father, thank you. 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 That money will locate you. Because you need it. That job will locate you. Because you need it. For a purpose bigger than you. Everything will come. Because it's according to the purpose that is bigger than you. In the name of Jesus. And may you never enter doors that are not meant for you. May you walk in the wisdom of which door to enter. Even when you have the keys to open them. In fact, may you find doors that are already open for you. May your doors look at you. I said, may your doors locate you. I said, may your doors locate you. May they locate you. May they locate you. May they locate you. May they look for you. May they find you. Because I've seen many who have died with the potential of whose doors they never found. They had keys but never found those doors. But that shall not be said of you. Say amen. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, Christ is the door. The Bible says, For there is no name by which men are saved. And there are going in heaven or everywhere by which men are saved, except the name of Jesus. So if you're here, and you say, I've had the word and I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Repeat this word after me, fellow Jesus. Tonight, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for my sin and was raised for my glory. Tonight, I give you my heart as I receive in this heart. Amen.
God bless. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make Manson.